we can begin by looking at Wikipedia to see a list of countries by income inequality. And this includes Gini coefficients, where the Gini coefficient is a number between 0 and 1, where 0 corresponds with perfect equality, so everyone has the same income, and 1 corresponds to perfect inequality, where one person has all the income. So we can just look at the list of countries and compare them. So this has some interesting data. So aside from the Gini coefficient, it gives us a couple of ratios. So the 10% column is the ratio of the average income of the richest 10% to the poorest 10%. And the 20% column is the same for the richest 20% compared to the poorest 20%. I'm in Ireland, so I just wanted to, you know, see where Ireland is. Though, you know, I, and I'll, I'll have the link to this site in the description below so you can you know have a look yourself find out how, uh, where you're from or f find out where um, where you are in this table so here's here's Ireland um, so the richest 10% is 9.4 times richer than the poorest 10%. The Gini coefficient is 33.9. Now, I don't know. I mean, what did I expect? Well, actually, I'd, I'd, I just wanted to compare with, you know, our, our nearest neighbours. Like, so, being from Ireland, I'd want to see how is Ireland different to the UK so there, there's the United Kingdom Ireland was 9 point something so the top ten, the ratio of the top 10% divided by or the ratio of t top 10% to bottom 10% is 13.8 and the Gini coefficient is 32.4 so this would suggest greater inequality while well, this, the Gini, would suggest lower. Let's check Ireland again. Well, I saw it. There, 33. Okay, it's about the same. This is interesting as well because you can see what is the difference in income before and after tax? So you can see, you know, it, what the measures taken by the government, by the tax system, does that encourage inequality or does it reduce it? So you can, you can see that uh, using the tables provided on this side. And it's good, you know, you can see what's hap how it's changed from the 1780s, 80s, 90s, and so on. So, like, what is the trend? Is inequality increasing or is it decreasing? So that's our base data set, like, um, to give us a picture of what's going on. An interesting point, which actually I hadn't looked at before I started work on this video, is actually the, the first line 
on this page or in the first paragraph where it says income distribution can vary greatly from wealth distribution so one of the things when I looked at the wealth distribution or inc income distribution Ireland is more equal than the UK than the US slightly less unequal than say Germany and various other European countries but if I look at the wealth distribution here's the page and I'll put in the link in the description below Ireland's wealth genie is actually bigger so the inequality that's occurring or the inequality in Ireland is more maybe in the form of wealth inequality rather than income inequality just to show so there's 0.58 remember lower means greater equality and then if I look at um, well, 0.58 is actually quite low so it's it's a higher number than the income inequality but when I look at the compa my comparison so what I wanted I wanted to look at so Canada has greater wealth inequality what would be my other France again has greater wealth inequality Germany has a lower than F France Gini but again higher than Ireland but I want to look at the US and UK because they'd be my would they be like the natural comparisons US far higher and United Kingdom 0.69 again a lot higher than Ireland so that, so that's just you know again you know more closer to raw data when we were looking at the Kelly criterion um, optimizing the, the size of the pie you know I mean if you if you invest using Kelly you're risking more it led to inequality because you had a couple of big winners to really maximize the overall overall wealth but that didn't result in you know greater wealth for the typical person maybe it, it didn't, it's not optimizing the median wealth for example just another look at the Gini coefficient associated with that is the Lorentz curve again I'll have the link in the description below you just plot the income against the population so 50 here would be the bottom 50 percent of income and how much money how much of the 100 percent income total income that's being made do the bottom 50 percent have so in this case it's about maybe well, it's over t half that so maybe 15 percent but it's 50 percent of the population so you know it's not they're doing a lot they're doing they're getting far less if the bottom 50 if the poorest 50 percent are making 15 percent then the top 50 percent are making 85 percent and that's 50 percent we're not just talking about the poorest 50 uh, or poorest five percent so the way this shows how the Gini coefficient is computed if everyone had the same amount of income then it, we would follow that red line we just got that straight line and that would describe 
their income against their population. But this curved line is the actual figure and that will vary from country to country. So once you've plotted the actual line for your country, then you can work out the area A, which is the area between the straight line and the curvy line, and the area B, so the area underneath that curve. So once you know the areas A and B, the Gini coefficient is A over A plus B. Another concept is the Pareto distribution. That was something that um, Pareto got when studying the wealth of people. And he found that the wealth amongst various societies was distributed in certain ways and that is the Pareto distribution. That led to various other things like the, the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule which has 20% of the population controls 80% of the wealth. Things have gotten m more extreme since then I'd say because many countries had the top 10% making 10 times more than the bottom 10. But so Pareto is another one of the concepts and figures that you come across when looking at income distributions. Finally, we have this site, and again, link is in the description, where they, he answers some interesting questions questions. For example, it shows that if you plot the Gini coefficient against real GDP per capita growth, so this is kind of what you want to be high up. You get the, the, these dots, you fit the best line or you produce the best line fit and that's a downward sloping line which suggests that to get if you if you have a low Gini coefficient, that seems to be associated with a high real GDP per capita growth. But this article goes on to say, well, you know, that's just because you're picking this range, this of dates, because it's because you're looking at developing countries. You could also produce other plots which would give you entirely different pictures. So for example, here he produces a plot which would suggest that to get growth you must get inequality. So it's an unanswered question. Here I've just looked at a couple of ideas that you might want to follow up. Till next week.